All right, I, I think we can start about now. So welcome everyone to the latest uh, Flow Talk, Flow stands for Federated Learning One World Seminar, as you know by now. And this is already, what is it? Which, which, which one is it already? 26. Are you counting? 26. 26. So 26 talk. We went quite some way since uh, uh, summer, when we early summer when we started this. And uh, today's talk will be on bias compression for distributed. And I hope it means also federated learning uh, by Mer Safarian, who is a uh, postdoc at KAUST. Uh, I probably don't need to say much about flow. You already know by now. This is uh, some, let me just say one or two sentences. This is a global seminar series dedicated to federated learning, all aspects of it eventually, including uh, algorithms, software, hardware, uh, systems, privacy, and, and all kinds of other issues that may be relevant to federated learning now or in the future. Uh, Samuel will mention how this thing works in case you're new to flow. Samuel, go ahead. Yeah, so, so just yeah, two things. Uh, Mary is happy to take the questions throughout his talk. And, and, and we don't see you, Samuel. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, and there are two ways how you can ask. So the first one is just in the participant menu, in, in, the, in the bottom menu, you can choose to raise hand. It's also in the bottom of the participant menu or just type your question to chat and set visibility to everyone. I guess, yeah, that's about it. Okay, Mayor. So go ahead. Feel free to start. Okay. Hey, thank you for the introduction and for the opportunity. Thanks to the audience for attending. So the talk uh, is going to be about unbiased compression for distributed and also for federated learning. This is a joint work with Alexander Beznosikov, who was an intern at the time at KAUST from, from MIPT and Sirius University from Russia, uh, Samuel Horvat and Peter Richtarik. Uh, okay, so that's, I guess, it. So, so let's start. What the problem, the optimization problem we are going to solve for this distributed optimization. So the problem is this finite sum minimization where, where the, the model parameters are D, where number of workers are N. We assume that there is N uh, workers or devices that we can use in parallel. Uh, we assume some strong convexity and smoothness assumptions on individual loss functions that each uh, node has. And by local loss functions, I mean uh, functions that depends solely on the, dis on the data stored on the node I. So each node has its own data stored locally. And the only access uh, that the I node has is the data di or the functions fi. And the problem is to minimize this finite sum. So what's the, what's the fundamental uh, method baseline for solving these kind of problems? So the method is distributed SGD uh, for which we have this n clients or devices and each has uh, Data, data di. So the, the process, the iteration starts as follows. At first, server sends the current iteration, current uh, model parameters xk to all the clients. And once they receive the, the current model parameters, they compute the stochastic gradients based on their local data di. So each each of these stochastic gradients are, we assume they are unbiased, meaning that in expectation, they, they produce the gradient with respect to their local loss. And 
after this stochastic gradients, all nodes supposed to uh, uplink this uh, stochastic gradients to the server, which, which afterwards does aggregation with some step size eta. And this process repeated over and over again until uh, some convergence. So the issue with these distributed systems and also in federated learning is this upward communication, so-called communication bottleneck. So each, each iteration and uh, each node sends a d-dimensional vector, which could be potentially dense, uh, sent to the server, which is the so-called communication bottleneck. So how do we uh, solve or remove this issue? So the approach that we took is to not send these dense G stochastic gradients, but instead to process these uh, vectors, to compress each uh, stochastic gradient individually. And, and then after this step, which, which we call compression step, and then send these compressed gradients to the server. And if we compress this gradients enough, the communication would be lighter than, than was previous, previously. And the, the, the rest is the same. The server aggregates the same vectors that it receives. And this is the uh, update rule for this step. Okay, so the solution that we took for solving communication bottleneck is using compression, using compressed SGD. So the, uh, it's clear that we need to understand what are these compression operators and how we need to investigate them. So by compression operator, we mean uh, any operator from d-dimensional space to d-dimensional space, where we also allow this operator to be randomized. So in each uh, input x, the output could, could be random, could be random variable. And let's, let's uh, view some, some examples. So the most popular one is the random sparsification, which uh, from D coordinates chooses K ones uh, uniformly at random. So for example, if we, if we are to compress this five dimensional vector with let's say K equal to two, we need to select two random coordinates. And we also add this factor here just to uh, preserve the unbiasedness of the, of the compression operator. And by unbiasedness, I mean this relation where in expectation compression operator, operator uh, produces uh, the same input. And in fact, this random sparsification is an instance of the so-called unbiased, the class of unbiased compressors, uh, which are well studied. There are many techniques that enhance the distributed SGD method, including uh, linear convergence can be, can be achieved. There is also variance reduction that we can do for these stochastic gradients. And also these methods can be accelerated. So we see that there are uh, fairly established uh, research, some result which uses these unbiased compressors. But uh, what we are going to investigate are the contrary, the biased compressors, which are complementary. And let's, uh, let's view the example of, the most popular example of biased compressor, which is top K. So, in contrast to, to random sparsification, to random K, top K picks the two, in, in, the, in K equal two, picks two most, uh, two coordinates which are the biggest in their magnitude. So instead of randomization, it picks two coordinates deterministically and chooses the biggest ones in magnitude. And there is no any factor here to preserve and bias because we cannot make sure anyway that this this uh, compression is unbiased. Basically, any deterministic compression is, is biased unless it's identity compressor. 
So, so this one is certainly top key is not unbiased. And the question is, can we study these biased compressors? Or, or before asking the question, so maybe we should ask, uh, is it worth to study biased compressors? What are the uh, benefits of them? So by this, by this slide, we can intuitively see that random K, random sparsification, by picking two randomly coordinates, it, there is a probability, probability that it will pick two smaller coordinates. And for top K, this is not an issue as it is always picks the biggest entries in magnitude. And this uh, intuitively led to the idea that, that top K should work better in practice uh, than random K. Okay, so that's kind of a uh, first stage motivation why biased compressor compressors or top K is interesting in this case. And what do we have, what kind of techniques we have for biased compressors? So for unbiased one, I mentioned these three uh, mechanism that we can add. And for biased compressors, we know very little. And the first question we, we ask here is the convergence. Do we have uh, convergence under biased compressor? If we use biased compressor instead of unbiased one, do we have convergence for this viewer's HGD? And before, before uh, digging to the details of the theory, let's, let's view some experimental uh, evaluations regarding biased and unbiased relation. So again, for top K and random K, we run this experiment on, on real data set with neural networks. And we collected these, uh, these fractions, which, which are relative errors uh, with respect to the compressors. So how much error do we, do we get by using compressor C? And this histogram show that they show that uh, biased compressors, the green ones, which are top case, top one fifth, biased compressors are at least of some factor better than than unbiased one. Top case is at least some factor better than random k. So so this was a, a real experiment on real data sets. So if we specialize the the gradients that that compressors are are uh, applying. If we specialize to the case where each coordinate uh, obeys some specific distribution, for example, Gaussian distribution, let's say each coordinate has Gaussian distribution, then some clear uh, difference could be could be observed. For example, in this case, this darker gray is top K compressor, where this uh, x-axis is the number of bits per coordinate from zero up to 32. And we see that uh, top K generally produces much lower variance than, than random sparsification in all uh, compression regimes. Okay, so we can also prove something uh, theoretically under some statistical assumptions. For instance, if we assume that each coordinate is uniform uh, over zero to one, then we can show that improvement of uh, this, in fact, top one over random one, this improvement factor could be shown that is this, so roughly three. And if we change the distribution, the factor, the factor changes also, but uh, this shows that there can be shown these improvement factors in some specific cases. In general, if we have arbitrary vector that top K and random K should be applied. So the worst case analysis are the same. They, they produce the same worst case error. But if we specialize the entries in some distribution, then this improvement factor can be computed, even can be computed in some, in some cases. And this story of biased is uh, better from unbiased by some factor is not constrained with this top K and random K. It can be also observed with other compressors. For example, in the second experiment, uh, we, we played with natural compression. So deterministic and randomized ones. And here also 
uh, deterministic biased compressor produces a, a lower variance than unbiased and randomized variant. Any, any questions up to this point? Okay. If I don't see anybody raising their hand, but feel free to okay. raise your hand and we'll unmute you and you can ask questions. So anytime, I know that Mary's okay to be interrupted. Sure. Okay, let's, let's get back to the convergence, convergence questions. So do we have convergence if we use biased compressors? So in fact, uh, we don't have even convergence and there is a very simple example, how, how the system can diverge if we, if we just plug biased compress, compressor in this distributed HDD system. So assume we have just three clients, three nodes, and each, each has these quadratic functions with, with these data vectors, A, B, C. And let's say we pick initial point uh, in a way that all coordinates are the same. So assume T is positive number, although it should also be true for if T is negative. So if this is the setup, then as we, as we did previously, server sends this initial vector to the clients. Clients receive, then they compute full gradient. Uh, so even, even with full gradients, we'll observe the divergence. So after computing the gradients, we apply top one compressor and then send to the server. And then server aggregates these, these compressed updates and for any, for any step size eta. And after aggregation, if we repeat this uh, step uh, k iterations, we'll see that the, the expression that is raised to power k is bigger than one. So the step size is positive and this diverges at the exponential rate. So this shows that uh, biased compressors are, are much harder to handle and uh, they are not guaranteed convergence if we just apply to the distributed edge. So something else needs to be done. The method should be adapted and some new mechanism should be added just to preserve the convergence. So this motivates us to better understand these biased compressors and the next we are going to define some classes of biased compressors and understand the relations between them. So first let's, let's recall that we have this class of unbiased compressors for which we already know one example, which is random K and one can compute this parameter zeta for random K, this D over K and for Biased compressors, we clearly cannot assume this first relation because this explicitly says that the, met, the, the compressor is unbiased. So we should abandon this one. So we are left some uh, upper bound on, on the norm of compressed norm, but this is not enough to, to do some basic theory. So we uh, add some more inequalities to them. And instead of this one, we can define some classes of biased compressors with, uh, with different inequalities. So this, so if we require instead of these two conditions, first of which we cannot even assume. So if we replace this by any of these three inequalities, we'll get uh, some class of biased compressors. And this last one is already a known compressor in the literature. It's called a uh, Delta compressor. Delta, delta contractor. And these other twos are new and they are all biased. So let's give some names to these classes, B1, B2, and B3 with their associated parameters. And <clears throat> as we mentioned, 
uh, one example of biased compressor was top K. And, and in fact, top K belongs all of these three classes. And one can compute these uh, parameters, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta for top K. And they are, uh, we'll have this, this form. Uh, one thing also should be noted that when we say these are classes of biased compressors, we do not exclude that some unbiased compressors can also be included in one of these classes. For example, identity compressor, which is clearly unbiased, belongs to all of these three classes. Basically, because we can set all of these parameters to one and will, an identity compressor will be satisfied. So by that, we know one example that belongs all of these four classes. And we also mentioned that uh, biasedness doesn't mean we exclude unbiasedness. So some unbiased compressors could be also included here. Okay, so let's do a little bit theory and understand the relation between these three classes. So, so as I said, th there is a one example that belongs all of these four classes, but other than that, the relation was, was out. So what's the relation between them? And this table shows that if we have compressor from one class, let's say from B2, then by appropriate scaling factor, we can show that uh, that compressor can be embedded into this other three biased classes. So if it belongs any of these four classes, even unbiased one, then if we scale the compressor appropriately, then we can embed to any of these three classes. This implies that these, these three classes of biased compressors are actually describing the same set of compressors. And, and in principle, they differ from, from parameterization. And now the, the natural question might be which parameterization is better and what's, which, one is, which one is better? What are the deeper relationship between them? Can we prove convergence rates using these biased uh, compressors? And to understand these questions more deeply, let's consider the single node setup when there's only one node and the, and the method is simply compressed gradient descent, which means, so we specialize distributed HDD in single node setup. And instead of stochastic gradient, we used full batch gradient. Again, we assume that function that we're minimizing is smooth and strongly convex. And by CK, I mean, we fix uh, one compressor C and in each iteration, we apply this compressor to the current gradient and CK uh, just means the realization at iteration K of the compressor C. So if we consider this, this method, CGD compressed gradient descent, then we can uh, prove convergence rates for all of these class, all of these three biased classes. For, so for, for unbiased one, it was known that the complexity is, is this. So zeta is the compressor, compressor parameter times condition number of F and log one over epsilon. So linear rate of unbiased compressors. But what's the interesting part is we can also show individually with, uh, with tightest bounds that all of these three biased classes also lead to linear rates and the rates have similar, similar structure. So first factor comes from the compressor, second fraction is the condition number and then log one over epsilon. And complexity is done in complexity. The, the Lapinov function is the difference of uh, functional values. And as I mentioned, uh, identity compressor belongs all of these three classes and if we plug these parameters, we get the same complexity rate as for standard gradient descent. So condition number times log one over epsilon. 
So as the master of ceremonies today, can I pause this for a second and just ask the audience to perhaps ask any question? Since you're already two thirds of the way into the talk, mm -hmm. guessing there might be something somebody wants to ask. Maybe my guess was wrong. <laughs> Nobody's asking anything. One last chance and then we move on. Okay, no takers. Good, at least we got some breather. Feel free to continue. Okay, so I have... Oh, there is actually, actually there's a question, but uh, okay. where is it? I don't see the hand to raise it here. Oh. Okay, so I see the question. Why? why so let's 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 unmute Chatty because I think okay. it's nicer if people can ask the questions themselves. So now you unmute it. I think you could. Oh yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, Matt, for for the uh, nice introduction and presentation. Uh, so uh, so my question was about actually the the bias compressor. I must have missed that point, but I would like just to know why why we need to go for a bias compressor and not the unbiased one. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Yeah, I, I tried to cover that motivation in this slide by the experiments, mostly with the point that biased compressors produce much lower variance than unbiased ones. And by that, I mean, they send the same amount of bits to the server, but they but they introduce much lower variance. And the variance, uh, by variance, I mean, so I mean this relative error. And this error then affects the convergence rate. So compressors uh, affect two things. They, they communicate to the server. So we want to minimize the communication, the number of bits. And the side effect of communicating less is the uh, noise of coming from the compressor. And by this experiment, I just wanted to highlight that the noise coming from the biased compressors, even if the bits are the same, is much less than if we use unbiased compressor. And these were the histograms that shows that the error introduced by, introduced by biased compressor is lower by some factor than unbiased, unbiased ones. I yes. see Shadi's not happy, so got it, thanks. Okay, good. Any okay. other questions? I don't see raise hands, I don't see comments. But again, feel free to type your comment or raise hands and we'll unmute you and you can ask a question. Yeah, I guess feel free to continue. Okay. So where we're left, I guess, I guess here. Okay, so so now we have uh, some, the, we kind of know that the usefulness of these three classes is that at least we can show that in a single node setup, uh, the, the method, the CGB method, convergence linearly. And now by the, if we remember the previous question, which are these, which of these parameterizations were better? We can answer these questions by comparing these complexity rates and we'll see which provides a better complexity. We might have decided that this one suits better for the analysis. And to compare these complex complexities, let's Let's do some uh, little derivations. So let's fix some compressor from B1. Then previous table 
shows this complexity and C is, C is from B1, but we also can scale this compressor and embed it to B3 with some other parameter, right? And again, using the previous table of complexities, we can, we can see that the complexity of this scaled one is the same. So in this case, so B parameterization of B3 seems as good as the parameterization of B1. Let's fix some C from B2. Again, we use the table to, to see what's the complexity for this. We can scale to embed it to the B3. And if we look the complexity again, we see that the complexity is also the same. So what does this show? So this means that the parameterization of B3, the B3 class, uh, describe that same set of biased compressors as good as these other two, B1 and B2. However, in some concrete examples, we can show that this B3 leads to better complexity. And one of these examples is so-called exponential dithering. So, uh, sorry, exponential rounding. So we fix some, some base B and for each coordinate, the compressor first picks sine. So we don't compress the sine, we keep the same. And for the magnitude, we choose the nearest uh, power of B. So for each entry Xi, we choose uh, T, one of these, one of these uh, entries, B of the power of K, that is the nearest to the Xi in magnitude. So this is just a biased rounding compressor with exponential levels. So for this, for this compressor, which is biased since it's deterministic and it's not identity, for this one, we can compute these parameters for all of these three classes. And after this, we can look the complexities from the previous table to find out what are the complexities for this exponential rounding. And what we see is that this third complexity, which comes from the B3 class, is the smallest one. So this shows that in this case, parameterization that B3 offers gives the better complexity, which is something that is useful in, in optimization and which is important to reach the uh, smaller accuracy with fixed number of iterations. Okay, so we somehow answered the, these questions that I raised earlier about how to investigate biased compressors, what definitions we could have, and which definitions are better than the others. So let's, uh, let's see some few more examples of compressors. So we already discussed random K. We discussed also the biased version of random K, which is top K. And we also we just covered the exponential rounding compressor. So one, one modification that one can do to random sparsification is to make it biased. And this will lead so-called biased sparsification, which uh, misses this uh, fraction, d over k. And if we remove this, this fraction, the compressor belongs to the biased class. And you can see that these parameters uh, can be computed easily, where q is the minimum probability pi, and pi is the probability that we pick the i coordinate. So, this is a bit in more, in more general form than random K. In, in random K, we selected K coordinates uniformly at random. We, here we uh, do a, in a bit much more general way. We, we assign a probability to each entry and then sample uh, entry by entry. Okay, so 
maybe the last uh, example, uh, much more general compressor is uh, unbiased rounding. If we pick uh, a sequence of positive numbers where K runs over the whole integers. And let's say the infimum of these positive numbers are zero and the supremum is infinity. So somehow we cover all the positive axes, sem semi-axes. <coughs> Sorry. Then by, by unbiased rounding, uh, we mean the following. First, we keep the sign as we did in exponential rounding. We keep the sign and for each entry, we look the, the magnitude. If it belongs to some interval AK between AK and AK plus one, sorry, between AK and AK plus one, we assign one of its neighbors with proportional probabilities so that the, in expectation, we, we produce the same input. So these probabilities are, are designed just to preserve unbiasedness of the C compressor. And this in general gives unbiased compressor. And if we specialize this one, if we, if we remove the randomness and instead of uh, randomly choosing the neighbor, we pick the nearest one, which means deterministically. And by choosing this sequence AK to the B over K, then we get exactly this exponential rounding. So in some sense, exponential rounding is a special case of this general unbiased rounding with these two nodes that we remove randomness and we specialize the sequence AK. Any questions up to now? So then I'm going to move to the convergence result on the distributed case using biased compressor. So we saw that uh, we, we had an example that if we use biased compressors, then distributed SGD could diverge. So this suggests that something should be changed to the algorithm. So we need to add some mechanism on top of it. And the mechanism is, is known, it's called error feedback. And the method uses these three lines of updates. And so the, re so the red ones are, are the new variables that each client, each node should store locally and also update locally. And this G I K tilde is the new gradient estimator that clients need to send to the server. So before in, in the first part of the talk, we were sending this GIK. We, we just sample stochastic gradient and send to the server. In this case, we, we sample the stochastic gradient, then add the error and, com and then compress this summation. And after compression, we send compressed vector GIK tilde and each node updates this error locally, which then will be added to the next iteration. So in some sense, we do compression and also store the error coming from the compression and add this error to the next step. So the method was proposed uh, in, in this paper and they showed quite good practical success using these uh, mechanisms uh, for, for biased compression and and after that, uh, some convergence theory were established, but, all, but only in this special case where only one node is used. So, so at the time that we're writing the paper, so the distributed case with uh, reasonable assumption on stochastic gradient J was missing. And this work was, was aimed to to fill that gap, so to provide the convergence result, convergence rate, under reasonable gradient assumption 
on stochastic gradient and also using biased compression. And the result as follows. So we have suboptimal convergence rate uh, with respect to difference of functional values. And the, the, the details are as follows. So, so these deltas are the parameter of compression operator. So we, we choose compression from B3. So this C comes from the assumption on stochastic gradient. So we assume that stochastic gradient has this bound on the variance. T is the so-called noise at the optimum with respect to the, the distribution. So uh, Xi must not be the solution for all Fi. So, this, so these vectors are not zero in general. And from here, we can see that if N is equal to one and there is no regularizer, then this term is zero. So that's why we got a linear rate when we used uh, gradient descent in single node setup. So we, we see already from here that if n equal to one and we don't have regularizer, this gradient is actually one. But once we have multiple nodes, then this gradients at the optimum could be different and this value appears in the, in the rate. Okay, and one more difference is that in contrast to the so the rates of CGD here, we don't have the last, it, the last iterate, but instead a weighted average of the old past iterations where weights and step sizes are chosen in this way. Okay, so what this rate gives us. So first it is sublinear convergence rate in, in any case, then we can notice that if, so this part is linear and this part makes the rate to be sublinear. So if we assume that C and D is zero, so we will have this linear rate, but only in this case when both C and D are zero. So this issue was uh, solved afterwards, after that we published a paper and Edward gave a talk on this, how to make, uh, how to provide linear convergence using biased compressors. And also Samuel talked about induced compressor, which also give a linear convergence, uh, which also uses biased compression. So these are these two improvements over this result, which remove this assumption in order to have linear convergence. Okay, so I guess that's it. I finished the slides. Thank you.